And tomorrow night, uh, as part of the, the variety show, uh, the mostly haunted section will be my job to reveal the results of what we find out uh, during our walk around the hotel. Um, we'll be doing one this evening. Um, after the, the show is finished, um, I'm sitting up there in the little balcony area. Um, if you come and find me, we will do a walk around this evening. Uh, I'll take you to some of the more interesting parts of the hotel. Um, for those of you that's past their bedtime, um, we'll also be doing walk arounds during the day tomorrow. Um, we'll do one starting from 11 o'clock. Um, I've got a little stall in the ballroom. Um, I've also got some interesting photographs that I will share with you. Um, uh, come and meet me there and then we'll do a walk around tomorrow from 11 and then we'll do one in the afternoon um, for about 2 o'clock. And then as part of the show tomorrow night, we'll have one final walk around for anybody that hasn't had a chance to do it yet. And then join the show this time tomorrow I will reveal what we find. Uh, as I said, there is a few different interesting stories we found out over the last few years, but um, you'll have to wait till tomorrow to hear those. Now, uh, in the meantime, if any of you find out um, anything of interest in the building whilst you're staying here, please let me know. Uh, also, if you have any of your own interesting experiences that you've had over the years, I'll be interested to hear those as well. Uh, and as I said, I've got some photographs and other stories to share with you um, if you come and see me in the ballroom tomorrow. Um, I actually run a group of paranormal investigators called TIP, Tor Bay Investigators of the Paranormal. Um, I've been doing this now for about 20 years, and we meet every Monday night at the Churston Court Hotel near Brixham, uh, which is a very atmospheric old hotel, and I've got lots of stories to tell you about that as well. Um, but this evening, if you want to do a little walk around the hotel, come and find me after the show. I'll be sat up there, and uh, we'll go for a walk. Okay, thank you very much. Now, we're, we're nearly there for kickoff. The other thing I've got to tell you, on my left, your right, is Lita. She's one of our regular palmist, psychic, card reader, clairvoyants, who, well, we've worked together nearly 20, nearly 20 years. And when we come to the interval, um, she can, she'll have the time to go to a couple of people, just do a mini, mini palmistry at the table to, you know, get an idea of what palmistry is about. If you want her to come to you, when we get to the interval and I announce it again, shout like mad, wave your hands like mad, etc. Alright, I think we're ready to kick off with Michael. <laughs> Sit and wait. Does an angel contemplate my fate? Do they know the ways is where we go when we're grey and old? Cause I be told that salvation.
to the light. That's better. Do you know? We're going to do the seance to the light. We're going to ask, is anyone out there through the light of a crystal ball? But I feel I want people a bit more warmed up for this. I feel some of you are really into this about angels. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people up there in the stars, aren't there? Do you know, I feel I've got uh, somebody you might know who wants to tell us something, wants to give us a bit of a message about music and love. And I think you might, somebody's got the name David coming. David? David? David. Not David with a B? Could it be? <laughs> He said, let there be light. 
Can we talk about people going back to the light, don't we? Talk about moving, returning to the light. Colin Fry's died. Uh, he's on his journey in the light now, isn't he? So what this means is that was created from light, and we return to the light when our mortal bodies go. What the bridge over the river is, is another matter. But what I think is for ball as a focus for light. Now here we've got artificial light, but what are we going to see in it? Now I can't do it all on my own, I need some volunteers up here. The volunteers are not going to them with the black bridge. The idea with the volunteers is that they're going to be my priestesses and priests. I am the high priest of Israel, and these people will be my priestesses and priests. So six is a very good number. Have we got six volunteers? All right. Okay. Well, with two screamers there. Did I hit the scream over there? No. Did I see a wave of a hand? I see a five pound note. We've got two volunteers. Okay, can the two volunteers come forward? Anyone else? Anyone at the back? Alright, can you come on down please? How many? Four? And can I have four please? Alright, will the assistants take a seat? Now, this, we've got an all-lady temple tonight, apart from me. Hello, you, you can come up the stairs. How many have we got? How many have we got? Four. All right. Young man, there's a place you can go. All right, you could help me up here. Now, this is, actually, this is interesting. I've never done anything. So we've got five. Is there any one, one other, one lady, right? Now, can we try to have the chair so you're sort of in a line there and a line there, a bit like a V-shape if you can. Now, all the ladies in the temple have to be Vestal Virgins. And I have to tell you, in ancient Egypt, where I used to do this, all the men in the priesthood have to be eunuchs. Are you comfortable with that, sir? <laughs> but these days we're a bit more liberal. Now, what I'd like you to do is handle the crystal ball on behalf of everybody else here, because it's not practical to pass it around 150, 180 people. So I'm going to put this down and do that. What I'd like you to do is gently hold it, put your energies into it, you can give us a shout, does it feel hot, does it feel cold, it changes from person to person, sometimes you don't get any feeling at all from it. It's like that with my wife. <laughs> um, the old ones are with, so the wife. Um, and then pass it on, and when you're doing it, you're thinking about all the people who you don't know, maybe the people you do know, and Frankly, anyone who's ever been through this building, because light travels 55,000 miles in the blink of an eye, um, seven and a half times around this earth in one second, and this created time has got all history, past, present and future recorded in it. So, we may have pictures that people out there can say yes to, which are pictures of what's happening now. We may, and what I'm asking for is anyone out there with it. Is that all right for you? No. The thing with this is when I start saying things, if somebody feels that I'm with them, I won't be looking at you, I'm just focusing here. So give us a shout, give us a scream. The worst thing is silence. Some say it's golden. No, no, light. are you okay with lights? Can we have the blue lights, please? Uh, okay, it's better than having the red lights, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Is that better? Thank okay. you. Well, this crystal ball was, this one was given to me 20 years ago by a man named Ray Collis, who was a great crystal stall holder, Crystal Kingdom. 
And it's been with me 20 years, and it's done a few bits on TV and all that stuff. Tonight is more important. Nothing is more important than here and now. All there is, is us, the universe, the almighty. People have gone upstairs, people have yet to come. Right, that's enough of a rabbit. Now, if it happens that it is somebody up here, don't exclude yourself. I mustn't fall off the stage doing this. Right. Okay, I'm told to describe a gentleman whose life seems to be about climbing the stairs all the time. I don't know if he's a ladder man, maybe he's climbing a ladder. That means he could either be a fireman or he was roofing, something like that. He's going up the ladder all the time. Um, I think I'm with somebody who's gone upstairs here as well. So he's got the heavy duty fire brigade uniform on, as though he's entering a building that he needs to do his work in. Right. It does happen with this that nobody says anything. Right, good. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm going to keep on with this. This gentleman is definitely a fireman with us because he's used to using cutting machinery, cutting equipment. He climbed through the windows, but he also does a bolt cutter job. That means cutting people out of cars, I guess. That kind of thing. All right. I'm giving the name Stephen in here as well. Somebody can think of a gentleman who's gone upstairs. His name is Stephen. We're associating with going up in ladders, which I think can mean the fireman. Doesn't mean that he hasn't done other ladder work. But he also has the bolt cutters with him as well. I'm going to say he's obviously a British chap. It's red, white and blue with this man. He's a very patriotic man as well. And I think the name is showing it looks like Stephen to me. Bit of silence. We can have, does anyone have a feeling of any of that? With us or gone upstairs? Is with us. Does any of his work relate to the kind of pictures? Army. Okay. Well, that would be very patriotic. That would be the red, white, and blue, wouldn't it? The latter work could be rescue. And I could be. And bolt cutting. Could be. Okay. That's what used to be called cavalry. It is steel. That doesn't necessarily mean driving tanks. So that means something. Works with the metal, the bolt cutters, and maintenance. Okay. Let's say that I am on the earth plane with him. So. As Muriel explained Sunday, we're mediums, psychic mediums. I would be called psychic medium. I could be here, I could be up there. All right. I'm going to say it's shown Pegasus with him. Now that means flight abroad. And it means flights abroad with him. Okay, well that's generally going to be true. I'm an old cynic. Okay. We'd like it for all at Salisbury Plain all the time, frankly. I'd like it for all at Salisbury Plain, but we'll say there's a flight abroad with him. So he's going to do duty abroad if he hasn't already. I'm going to say this gentleman has got a note in his hand that's important to be passed on. I think he has written out things like last will and testament, right? That should be important maybe to you in some way that he has uh, set out for his life already. He, okay, would you know him well enough to be able to confirm that he's showing a candle for having lost a dad of late? Right, he has a candle he holds for his dad. Right, but he's gone recently? His mum went recently, he holds a candle. Very traditional, candles, any kind of incense burning is sending up our prayers and wishes to, depending on your point of view, the elementals, 
the angels, the universe, the almighty. That's why churches latched onto it. If this man holds this candle in his hand, so it must be right to his heart as well. Um, I'll just say, God bless anyone in the British Army, because they need it. All right. Actually, I'm going to say something else if I'm still with this gent. We see newborn coming in with him as well. Can you take that with him? <coughs> one has gone out and one comes in. Don't know if that's in the pipeline at the moment. Right, I'm going to move around a bit. Funny old mic this one, I have to hold it right up to my fizz off. Right. Yes, turn it up, thank you. Right, I've got a lovely clip. It's gone now, it's back. I've got a lovely collection of butterflies and moths coming in here. Now, most people would have collected butterflies, but I think this means this gentleman is a collector of moths as well as butterflies. I don't want to go to somebody and say they went to Dad's wardrobe and it was mothy. <laughs> this is more than that, it's a gentleman who actually collected. It's a very 1920s, 1940s type of thing. Right. If he says he's Dan or Daniel as well, upstairs. Is that just having a beer or waving to me? Having a beer. Alright. The name shown is Daniel. There are no Daniels, because I can trace through the name to get further into the description. Daniel, and he had a collection of butterfly and moth. He's on earth plane. Collects butterfly or moth? Well, aren't many around people these days are butterfly and moth, are they? This was a thing of the past. In fact, I think it's probably illegal to collect certain butterflies now. So there's a Daniel, he's with us, and he collects butterfly and moth. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Don't know how it helps anyone. All right, let's try and get him back. Okay. I'm going to say that he can have a career ahead of him to do with librarianship and can you take librarianship with him? Right. He can have a career ahead with him to do with librarianship. That's about all I've got for him actually. Now, I'm going to say as well, I think this is a lovely chap. Can you hear us? This is a lovely chap, Daniel. He's a sensitive chap. And we're going to see him holding the crystal in his hand as well. You know, a lot of people are into crystals. But this is a tiny crystal, not a big crystal. And he's going to hold this crystal in his hand. I'm going to say as well that we associate him with of having some bad cuts to his hands in childhood. I don't know if these were accidents. He played with glass and broke. Don't know. No. We'll just leave it, but we've got Daniel who's on the earth plane. He comes in for this lady, holds a crystal in his hand, he collects butterflies and moths. And frankly, only God knows why he does, because I don't. <laughs> right. Okay. That's what we're doing. Okay. I'm not going to do, go down the route of talking about spirit guides in here, because it's even harder for people to give a definite yes or no to. Right, I'm going to jump in here, and I know we've got a predominantly Brit audience, but I'm going to talk about a gentleman who comes in for us from India, and we associate him as working with medical missions and working with people who suffer from diseases even such as leprosy. Now, I know most of us here are England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland, but I want you to think back on this. I'm going to ask... Okay. I'm going to say it's a gentleman who ends his days in a wheelchair himself and being pushed around, because I'm showing a wheelchair in here. But he worked abroad, and I guess that means India, and worked as medical missionary. Something going to help me out with this? No. Right, I'm trying with this. I'm not going to give up on it. Okay, so this is 
definitely a gentleman who worked abroad in medical field. And he comes in here and he wants to give a message through the light. By the way, the dark is for you. By the way, from Daniel. The diamond message is diamond coming for you. Right, does that mean you're due a special one from somebody? It's on its way. Right. I'm going to have to leave that. People can't go back. I mean, we're pretty definite here. We've had names that we can link with, but they're earth plane. I want to go beyond to people who've gone upstairs. I'm just going to stick with this, that there is a gentleman who wants to be shown who worked abroad in medicine, and I think it's in India, and I think it's with diseases, illnesses over there. But if we can't, nobody out there, out I'm going to move on. Excuse me. Yes. The man you've got in India is my father. Okay. Who is the medical corps. Could I come over to you? This is my exercise for the year. Do you know I'm in training for the next Olympics? Rent for me in the 100 metre Zimmer frame. The man that you have with you is my father. He's in the medical corps in India. He was actually born out there as well. Okay. And Dan, who well, was his brother, who was a policeman, and had butterflies in a picture, not collected them, but he had about six or seven in a picture. So, and they, they were brothers? Were, uh, no, brother and brother-in-law. Brother and brother-in-law. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for telling us. I'm going to say as well, thank you to the people upstairs who have revealed them. So, the gentleman here was brother, the Daniel was his brother-in-law, he collected the butterflies, the picture, but the brother worked in India. Your father worked in India, in the medical corps, so he would have worked with local diseases, and he would have met lepers and bandaged and so on. Right, well God bless him too. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people upstairs, aren't there? I do think sometimes, if we take the Christian view, you know, you only go, go upstairs if you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, you know. But I reckon there's a lot of other people up there as well. You know, those who live their life as light as a feather, to take the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian view. And even those who are on their deathbed said, Lord, save me. They're all upstairs. How about that? We're probably going to meet a lot of old drunkies and gamblers up there. And if on the deathbed they said, Lord save me, they'd go upstairs, how about that? Think Billy Graham would like that, wouldn't he? All right, can I try a bit more and even turn my back to you to get more light? All right, what I should have done is said, Elaine, would you help me with the mic and run over there? And I'll use that one. Right, what I've got to do with this is try, I've got to try and get beyond the reflections of the light and go into the depth of it. Mighty ho. Alright. <coughs> okay. Tell you what, this is a funny mic every time I breathe, you hear? Okay, sure the gentleman we identify from having lost his teeth, probably in his 14 or 15, but we think he leaves here to go to New York in his 20s. So we want to pin down, gentleman who lost the front teeth, maybe at 14, but also leave these shores but to a land of tall buildings. All right. I'm going to give you the... We're going to give you the James name with this as well. We've gone abroad. I think I'm going to be 
because of the picture of the buildings and the age, we're going to be upstairs rather than earth plane. Alright. Known as a good card player as well. Try and pin this down, Jimmy. Teeth lost at front. Goes abroad. Probably New York. Anyone wants to scream, please scream. Wave. Go to bed. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to say that because I think there's a lot of laughter upstairs, and probably at this. Okay. All right. I'm going to give this gentleman two names here. It's a B name and a Duke J name. So his name's Bruce and James. more precise on this, so I want a yes from somewhere. Think back, could be dads, could be great uncles, could be granddads. Right. Saying over here he was familiar with a rib, River Seven, wherever that is. Pinning down location is from here. Right. Saying in the family, nobody actually knows what happened in the end. Once he left these, there's no more contact. I'm not going to look and think, where do I see? I'm waiting for somebody to say. David, it's suspicious up there. No, it's not with him, no. All right, I'm going to go to the gentleman who had that beer glass up with a black T-shirt. Okay, I want you to be here in family. Lost black sheep of a family. It's gone all together. People we lost contact with. Ask, ask your grandparents. The names Bruce and James, dash Jimmy. Lost front teeth, went abroad, looks like New York, maybe 1930s. Maybe 1930s. Do you know your family history? Not to know, not to 1930s. Well, I'll just say thank you to them for that. Um, what's the time? Right. I'm going to ask for one more because I want to end with somebody. It is difficult. I mean, I know my family to 1860, but it's difficult if people don't can't go back to grandparents and beyond, it is difficult. All right. I'll just say more about that picture. You need to ask about why he had to go, because he went to escape the law. Have a think. Let me know next year. Well, I agree it's a problem. You need to know your mum and dad, you need to know your grandparents. I agree it's a problem. I agree it's... Um, sorry to hear that. Right. Okay. I agree that's a problem. It's a problem. Let's look on... So. Right, I'm going to say we've got treasure trove coming here. We are on people who are going to find a dig in the ground. People are going to be doing a bit of digging. I don't mean the tall bay paranormal digging, but I've got a gentleman who spends his time. He's either surf or he's digging for what he can find. So this is the family who like to do it because there's a more than one with him. So I guess he goes with a wife or partner, or it's a son or daughter with him as well. And what they like is to go over the sand looking for things, but they do like to dig as well. And they like to dig on earth as well as sand. And they've got a find coming up. Now I want you to think back of who it is that you've got with you, because we're probably on earth plane here, who it is we've got who does this kind of hobby. Right? I'm going to again say they're showing me the name that 
looks like Lawrence and their own name with it. But what I'm going to say is this shows me good fortune coming their way. So Lawrence with this lady, not with you, on an earth plane. I'm sure the name Lawrence, I'm sure he does digging, he's looking for treasure. He's with somebody here and what you meant to say to him is carry on doing it because you're going to get your find coming up soon. Anyway, I hope you all find your treasure somewhere. I thank you for being lovely priest and priestess. You are bringing in the energies. Particularly it's thank you to the lady at the back for her dad revealing and the brother you are revealing and India and the medical and thank you to the people who come through. Presented. So do come along if you would like a reading over the weekend. I'm just going to give you a little taste of what a reading is like, uh, showing you how the tower works and how you can move your life forward with the help of the cards. But first of all, I'd like to throw this open to you, the audience, and invite you to have a little glimpse of what your current year holds in store for you. And you can do this yourself simply by looking at your birthday. This is the year 2016. And as anybody who knows anything at all about numerology can tell you, that means it's a nine year. How do we know that? Yeah, exactly. So you add up the numbers, two plus one plus zero plus six, and you get nine. Now, nine has a very special quality. Any number that you add to 9 stays the same. So, whatever your birthday is, if you add that birthday to 9, it is still the same. So this year, your birthday tells you exactly what year you are in, in your personal year cycle. A cycle of, pers of personal years is a cycle of 9 years. And we all live in cycles of 9 years. From the first year to the ninth year, from the beginning to the end of the cycle. Each cycle is like a chapter in our life. 
and we bring to fruition something major over the course of that whole chapter. And it all begins in the one year. And what I'd like to try and find out tonight is how many of you, the audience, are living in a one year this year. So what we need to know is your birthday. And what we need to know is what your birthday adds up to, the, the day of the month and the month itself. If you add those numbers up, those digits, you should get one single digit eventually. And we don't need the year, because it's a nine year this year. So the, the year doesn't matter. We're very fortunate this year. It's very easy for you. Uh, my birthday is the 14th of August, which is 1 and 4 plus 8, which will add up to 13, won't it? 1 and 4 is 5, and 8 is 13. So you add up the 13, and that's 1 and 3, that's 4. So I'm not in a one year, I'm in a fourth year. Okay, this is about hard work and effort and com constant, constant productive work. What I want to find out is how many of you have got a birthday that adds up to one. And the lucky uh, members of the audience who do, who are in a one personal year, I shall invite up to the stage and we'll have a look at what you could be beginning very importantly this year in your life. Okay? So now you've had time to work it out. Okay, so you take, you take the number of your day, okay, you could, it could be any number between 1 and 31, couldn't it? Yeah? And then you add it to the number of the month, which is obviously between 1 and 12. And then you reduce it again to one single digit, between 1 and 9. Okay, so we got two over there. What other numbers have we got? Sorry? 12 adds up to 3. 9. We've got 27, that adds up to 9. 10, ten. Oh, who said 10? Could you tell us why you said 10? So can you tell us your birthday? This lady's birthday is the 23rd of September. Okay, now does that add up to 10? I don't think so. No. Okay, try again. Is, is there nobody with a birthday that adds up to one? 27th of June? 27th of June? 27th of May? Right, so that's 2 plus 7 plus 5. I don't think that adds up to one. No, okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? No? Sorry? Can you tell us the birthday? 29th of January. Right. Does, it, does, that, does that add to one? How does that add up to one? It's today. Come on stage. Thanks, George. Okay, is there, is there anybody else's birthday add up to 1 or to 10 or to 19 or to 28? I'm sorry? It adds up to 1 by, by reducing the numbers. Okay. Sorry? Okay, this lady, can you tell us how you how you add up to ten? When is your birthday? Sorry? Fourth of June, perfect. Please come and join us. Thank you. So we have one lady whose birthday adds up to ten. Anybody else? Fourth of May, that adds up to Nine. Anybody else? Nobody else? Who? Can you tell us the birthday? 26th of February. What does that add up to? Two plus six plus two. Ten. Congratulations, sir. Adds up to one. Would you like to join us? So we have two now. 
Well, statistically, I think we have an audience of about 200, 180 perhaps. We would expect about, uh, sorry, 17th of November, is that good? 1 plus 7 plus 1 plus 1 is 10. Right, so, we have three of you now. This is a very special year for our guests here. Can you tell us your name, please? Pat, Elizabeth, Craig. Are you a manager, Craig? And are you on the one in the one year? You are Craig's in the one year. Okay, and sorry, Gareth. Right. So what does the one year mean? What does the one year mean? It means it means a major new beginning. It could be a change of home. It could be a change of relationship. It could be a change of sex. I don't think so. Uh, it could be a change of financial status. It could be a, a change of country, change of employment. It's a major new beginning that will see, set you forth on a new journey for the next nine years. So this is a, a super important year for, for, the, for the people assembled here. And I'd like to ask a volunteer to come up now and have your cards read for us tonight. Who would like to come first? Right, okay. Come and join us. Thank you. Right. Okay. And our paper assistant Mike will be on hand to give you to show you enlargements of the cards that Elizabeth will be drawing. Okay, just two cards. Something very important happening in your life this year, which is a beginning year. And to do that, I would like you to find out what your two cards are. Can you step the other side of the table, please? Now, these are the Tower Majors, and I'm going to ask Elizabeth to pick just two cards and place them on the stand in front of you. Face down, please. Face down. On the stand. On the middle. That's correct. That's very good. On the middle. There we are. Number one on the left. Number two on the right. We turn those cards over. We've got the Justice card, reversed, and we've got the Wheel of Fortune. That's a lucky year for you. However, uh, Michael will be showing us a magnification of those two cards. Uh, could you move the table with me so you're not standing in the way of the cards? Push the table this way, thank you. Okay, lovely. I hope the audience can see. Okay, can you all see those two cards there? Yeah. We, we should have the justice card, Michael. We should have the justice card on the left, reversed, in the wheel of fortune. Okay, uh, justice card is telling us that just, justice card, card reversed with you is telling us that there's there's some kind of issue that you need you need to resolve legally in order to move on with your life. And at the moment, it looks looks as if. This, this year is going to see you moving forward quite fast and powerfully when you sort out this particular issue. But it's reversed. And the reverse card means a little bit of trouble, or a little bit of delay, or a little complications. Okay? But once, once those are solved,